In the very beginning of the most recent Nintendo Direct, we were given a reveal trailer for a brand new Fire Emblem Warriors title. This game, Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, is a direct follow-up title to both Fire Emblem Warriors, which it will share gameplay elements with, and Fire Emblem Three Houses, from which it will draw its story. At a glance, a few things can be gleaned from this trailer regarding this game's narrative. First, this game appears to be set in some sort of middle period between the time skip of Three Houses. The characters, most returning from Three Houses, are seen sporting their pre-time skip designs in some scenes, alongside new redesigns that seem to reflect that some time has passed, but not as much as the post-time skip designs. Characters are depicted with more warlike attire than they had in their academy phase, such as Hubert, who sports the look of an Imperial officer, while also not having all of the elements of their post-time skip designs, such as Dimitri, who is yet to have lost an eye, although Admittedly, this is not something that occurs in every route, and this could be just a reflection of the routes where he hasn't lost an eye and, and will not lose an eye, but I think this is unlikely. The world is clearly at war as well, meaning it's incredibly likely, for these reasons, that the events of this game will take place during the period of war glossed over by Three Houses' time skip. However, this poses an interesting question. Given that Byleth features prominently in this trailer, specifically female Byleth, but more on that later, and that Byleth is absent from this period in the main narrative of Three Houses, what does that mean for this game's story? Personally, I'm expecting time travel shenanigans of some sort, as both the first Fire Emblem Warriors title and most recent Hyrule Warriors title leaned on it as a gimmick, and it's a mechanic that's been used in a mainline Fire Emblem plot before. This could be used as a setup to create a golden route of sorts, with all characters playable something that many Fire Emblem fans have wanted since the release of Three Houses in 2019. This could also explain Geralt's presence in the trailer, alongside what appears to be a version of Monica with a different design. Perhaps the real Monica, rather than Kronia's impersonation of her, or perhaps Kronia herself. It could also be a family member of the real Monica, for all we know. We're not going on much here, except vague design similarities. But it could very well be true, especially given Kronia's popularity and her lack of screen time in the original game, all things considered. Given this game's setting, we could potentially see characters mentioned only in dialogue in Three Houses, such as the fathers of Bernadetta or Caspar, or Hilda's older brother, Holst. These never-before-seen characters could be fleshed out and given designs and personality, while also easily existing in the Three Houses world due to being pre-established. It's actually for this reason that, when the new, mysterious villain of this game showed up, Dueling Byleth, I speculated that they may have been Holst upon my initial reaction due to their hair color. Though, upon reflection, this is almost certainly wrong. Their appearance is too drastically different from Hilda's, and their demeanor is way different from what I'd expect of Holst. Not only that, it makes absolutely no sense that Holst would be a big villain that's on the box art of the game as well. My somewhat quixotic theory dashed, I'm left speculating, as most of us are, about the identity of this mysterious character. Based on the box art and the imagery of their fight with Byleth, it seems that they're a dark equivalent to Byleth of some sorts, perhaps guided by a similar dark equivalent to Sothis. If this is true, this is actually similar to an idea considered for the original Three Houses, but scrapped, with an enemy, perhaps Edelgard, being able to use their own crest of flames to render your Divine Pulse useless, or perhaps to even use Divine Pulse themselves. It's easy to see why this mechanic was scrapped. Divine Pulse is a player's utility tool, and taking it away suddenly could cause a lot of frustration. Plus, it would be hard to design maps around the use of Divine Pulse by an enemy unit. I could see it becoming easily frustrating if you were forced to redo the same moves over and over again, or if an enemy you had already killed was brought back to life, and your progress was wiped away, even if only a little bit. However, an action game such as Warriors could be a perfect time to use this mechanic, perhaps having Divine Pulse limited to a specific range, or functioning differently than it would otherwise. In fact, this is why I'm so legitimately shocked that Divine Pulse was not Byleth's final smash in Smash Bros. It would have been a great way to include Byleth's time dilation abilities in a fair and balanced way. This game now has an opportunity to do that with a dark equivalent to Byleth, perhaps influenced by those who slither in the dark. And that excites me. While searching online for reactions to the trailer and writing the script for this video, I noticed a lot of people were very excited that female Byleth was presented as the true Byleth in this game and found that many people considered it odd that male Byleth was missing from the game entirely, including on the box art. 
This also seemed odd to me, and actually, it was this line of thinking that was expressed in a Twitter thread with a theory I believe could very well be true. This tweet from user at doodled stars reads, I'm pretty sure the purple hair guy is male Byleth from another world captured by those who slither in the dark. When I read this, my mind was blown. Looking at this villain's character features, they actually strikingly resemble male Byleth in some ways. Given the being above them is oppositional to Sothis, perhaps they were implanted with the dark goddess's crest stone instead by those who slither, and this is what created this villain. It would explain the absence of male Byleth in the game, as they are instead represented by this entirely different character. It also is worth noting that in the game's imagery, female Byleth does not have her enlightened hairstyle, but instead has her initial dark pre-time skip style. While this potential male Byleth seems to have an enlightened one-esque hairstyle, but perhaps influenced by this dark god's presence instead of the presence of Sothis. Continuing with their theory, at Doodled Stars as the following. That relic is unknown and has no crest stone either. And his armor, wait, it matches the color palette of Gerald. If this is true, it only further cements this theory that they are male Byleth, or at the very least an equivalent to our fell star. And if the armor is connected in some way to the Bladebreaker himself, it could tie into his presence in the game, despite his death at the hands of Monica prior to the war in Three Houses proper. Regardless of what the true answer is, we'll likely find out on June 24th, 2022, when Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes releases, and let me tell you, I couldn't be any more excited for its release. I have full faith that it will more than top the original Fire Emblem Warriors and be an excellent and welcome addition to the story of Three Houses. If nothing else, it's a spin-off and no one has to take it seriously, right? Oh, and one more thing. I do wonder if this game has anything to do with the footage of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion that we had seen before with the Lords in alternate costumes, which was posted officially by Nintendo in a video featuring voice actors, if I remember correctly. Either way, there's a good chance that we'll find out the answers to this and many more questions soon. Well, that's all for me today. My name is Vantage Emblem, and I'm so incredibly excited for this game. I hope to see you all soon. Thanks for watching, and have a great day, everyone. Here's hoping for more Fire Emblem news in the near future.